it's Melissa. Happy Monday. Today I am going to show you how to make some super cute, fun, fast, and very, very easy um, earrings. These are sublimation um, earrings. They come uh, obviously blank and we are going to customize them. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So um, before we get going, I'm just going to tell you, I linked to everything. I linked to the earrings that I'm using. I'm, I linked to the pick scan mat, which I used. I linked to the heat press. I linked to the designs. I linked to everything up top, including, um, more information on sublimation, all the sublimation printers that I have and everything like that. So even the hooks that I used for the earrings, I linked to up top. So if you have questions about where anything is from, um, that's where it is up top to the side, wherever you're watching down below, if you're going to watch this later on YouTube. Um, anyway, so the first thing that we want to do is I got all these sublimation blanks there that are earrings. Okay. They come in a pack and they have lots of different shapes, um, and sizes. They are come pre-drilled. They're front back. They are ready for sublimation. Okay. It's, they come, I don't even know how there's 32 pieces. They come in this little pack. They even come with the hooks. Although I decided not to use the hooks and I'll tell you why. So how do you know how to get the right size or shape on your design? So here's the trick. You can, of course, go into Silhouette Studio and kind of, you know, try to, before you go into Silhouette Studio, try to figure out how to measure this and then create that design. Or you can use your pick scan mat. Now I'm going to pull you down here just because if I lift this up, everything's going to fall. But basically what you're going to do, as you can see, I already did this, but I have my pick scan mat laid out with all these pieces on the mat, okay? And then all you do is you take a picture from overhead of the entire mat, okay? Then you go into Silhouette Studio and you, using the pick scan tool, which is the top, the second tool on the top right, you just import this photo, okay? What that does is it brings the photo into Silhouette Studio and it keeps everything in exact proportion. So what does it look like in Silhouette Studio? This is what it looks like. And then from there, I am able to um, size my design. So I didn't end up cutting anything on the pick scan mat, which you can do, but I really just used it so I knew the exact size that I need to make my cute little gnomes to fit on these um, this, this shape earring okay so i have them here a couple extra here these are obviously blank and this is what we're going to use all right so once i knew the size and everything i then just did in silhouette studio i created um i took a couple of designs from the march so fancy bundle these little gnomes are from the march so fancy bundle and then i i you know added that little background um with which you can see is what do you call that checkered pattern again i forget uh, anyway, it's green. Okay. I forget. I have that too. Okay. And just because otherwise my background of my earring would be white with the gnome on there. All right. So now what do you do? Then I printed that on my sublimation printer. Okay. I have three sublimation printers. So if you're asking, does this work on Epson? It does. If you're asking, does this work on Sawgrass? It does. If you're asking, can you do it on Mac PC? It does. Okay. So you can do all of that and you end up with your printed sheet. All right. Okay. So I'm going to push you back down here to the table so we can see what we're doing. By the way, I did all of those, um, I did all of the earrings at the same time so that I can keep that template in Silhouette Studio for when I sublimate the rest of those, but I'm really only using this size today, okay? All right, the little teardrop. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you wanna make sure that you prepare your earrings correctly, all right? So these come with, I had another one. Where'd it go? Um, these come and they have a, I actually think I already did it on these, but they have a plastic film on them. So you need to remove that film. It's so that it doesn't get scratched. Here I am using a hook to remove it. But if you try to sublimate before you remove this film, you're, it's not going to sublimate. Okay. So make sure that you remove that. It's on both sides. Now, like I said, I already did it on the teardrops because I was preparing ahead of time. Oh, there's my other earring. There's my other earring. All right, so you remove that. Now, one of these I left that ha I left it. You know, it's this one. I left it with it on there so I could demonstrate. And here I, okay. It's very hard to tell. You can see like this one, it already has the film off and this one doesn't. So it's very hard to tell. So just make sure that you peel that 
film off of there, okay? And you want your heat press warmed up to 356 degrees. I didn't make that time up. That's what the directions for the blanks say. And it, I got these on Amazon and I linked to it and it's it, that's what it says to do. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, and I made these front back. Where's my other little guy? Now, of course I'm missing him, my, my match. Okay, well, I'll just cut another one. That's why, I mean, you know. Anyway, okay, so what you're gonna do is now that you know that it's gonna fit on here because you sized it, and I made a bleed area so that I had no white that ended up around my um, earring on the edge. Okay, so you see I had the bleed, and the way I did that is I just kind of traced around the shape that was in uh, from my pick scan mat, and then I just made an offset, okay? And so we know that's gonna fit on there. And what you're gonna do is take a little piece of high temperature tape, and you are gonna use that to keep your blank in place while you press, okay? I'm gonna actually trim this piece off. I don't want it really overhanging because it'll, um, it will, um, Stick to my press. Okay, so I need to make another one of these guys with the horseshoe. So I'm just gonna cut. I don't know where my other one got to. It must have fallen. All right. Okay. So we can do these all at the same time. All right. And I'm gonna use this as the piece that I cut off of the other one. I'm just gonna. You just. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make it so it pretty much stays on there. Okay. And then we'll do this guy. And we can do these all at the same time. Okay, actually you could do a lot more than this, um, but I only have the, the, I'm only doing four right now, okay? Okay, so we're all set. Now we're gonna move over to the heat press, which I have warmed up. Like I said, 356, 30 seconds, okay? And you are going to put down a piece of parchment paper, even copy paper, um, or butcher paper, and you're gonna use that to protect your bottom platen. The reason being, if you get any um, like blowout, ink blowout there, or ink, um, you know, it, and you can kind of see it on this paper, I think. There's a little bit of green around one of these. You don't want that on your bottom. You don't want that on the platen itself, okay? You just get it on the paper instead. All right, so then, here, maybe I can move you a little closer. Hi, that's very close. All right, and then we're gonna put this so that the sublimation paper faces up, the up, okay? So we'll put that there. I've got a couple more over here that I need to do. Sorry, I'm walking right in front, okay? All right, so our tape is gonna hold that all on there. And then we are gonna press this 30 seconds. Okay, while that's going, I'm going to get my, the rest of them ready here. Okay, remember, whoops, we're doing front back, so we can only do one front or back at, at a time. So I'm just trimming these pieces apart while we're waiting. You know, with sublimation, you don't have to cut the design because any white part is not going to be um, transferred, only the colored parts. And what you'll notice here is that this is like a really, like it's not very vibrant, but it ends up vibrant once you apply the heat and pressure, okay? Now this is hot, so just be careful. My family makes fun of me for these gloves, but they are very helpful. So what I'm gonna show you here is how vibrant that comes out. Now, this is smooth, there's no hand. That's the benefit of sublimation, okay? So we have that, and the other side is still blank, so we're gonna do that part next, okay? So let's peel all of these, and whoops, of course, I've got one hand without um, a glove, so that's like only half helpful. Okay. All right. See how it perfectly fit on there? Because I used the pick scan to help me size so that it filled the space really nicely. Okay. And we, I will bring you back over here where we can finish these guys up. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. So this one needs a horseshoe. I guess you don't have to do them the same way. I mean, you could put a horseshoe on one and a 
um, shamrock on the other if you wanted, I suppose. Okay. So this time we're gonna do it that way. And again, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna fold it over because sometimes the tape where it's taped folded over, if it's on the sublimation part, then it ends up like a lighter color. So you just gotta be careful with that. Okay, then we've got this guy. So we'll do him. I folded that one over because it's not on any of the sublimation part. Okay, so it's safe. And then this one, I need another shamrock. Or maybe that's not a shamrock. Clover. I know you you Irish get a little offended if you call a four-leaf clover a shamrock and it's a clover or vice versa. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm only Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Okay, now we will switch around and do the other side. So again, we're gonna flip this back over and we're gonna do another 30 seconds, okay? And when we're done this, we'll be ready to put the hooks on there. Now, this heat press, I'm gonna pull you back up here. This heat press right now is sold out. If you are interested in the eight and one, which obviously don't have to use an eight and one for this, you can use you know any kind of heat press you have, it's totally fine. Um, if you're interested in this one in particular though, you can sign up to get alerts when it comes back in stock. Now, as I said, the earrings themselves, the, the blanks, all of these blanks here, they come with hooks, okay? The thing is, the, they re, these hooks require tools and um, I didn't feel like digging out my jewelry tools today. So I'm using these other hooks. Actually, let me pull this off of here so it doesn't, okay? Um, so now we have back and front, oops. Cool. Cute, right? Um, so what I'm using are these other earring hooks that I have that have like a little ball on the end that you can just swoop through. And that way you don't need any type of um, tools to do these. So I'll show you quickly what I mean. And I link to these as well. These actually come. So see this kind of hook? You can hook, link, you know, put this right through the earring and then you don't need any type of um, tool. Okay, so that's why I like it because the other ones, um, like I said, these, these are what come with it and these are totally fine, but it has this little, you're not gonna probably be able to see, this little part on the end that you have to use um, jewelry like pliers to separate and so it's just another extra step that I'm always looking for little ways to make things happen faster. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the great thing, like I said about these, is because they are, oops, because they are um, uh, re, um, double-sided, if they, whoopsie, if they get um, twisted around in your ear, it's not white on the back, right? Let's see. Find the hole in the earring. Oh, darn it. I'm having bad luck with that one. All right, well, we'll put this one. There we go. Okay, so cute, right? Yeah. All right, and then we'll do the second one. And of course, you can make these. You could, you know, wear two of the same. You could wear one of each. They're just kind of cute. I'm gonna give a pair to Olivia. I'm sure she will love them because she likes little cute things. And yeah, super fun. Like I said, these designs, the little gnome designs are from um, the So Fancy bundle, the, the March SVG um, and Font bundle, which I linked to up top. So all of that stuff comes with the commercial use file and you are, so you can sell them if you wanted or give them as gifts or whatever you want to do okay all right you guys all the links to the earrings the designs the heat press the sublimation printers the hooks the i think that's it oh pick scam at everything i linked to so you can grab it and if you're interested in learning more about how to use the pick scam mat 
Um, I have tutorials on the blog for that. It's very, very difficult, if not impossible, on these Facebook Lives to show that in software stuff. So if you're interested in videos on that, you might want to check out uh, Silhouette You. All right. All right, guys. I'll see you soon.